and on just for fun, is in your packets was a catalog from, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the plastic Alum place. Alumalite. Alumalite. They're in Kalamazoo, and actually their little factory is one of these places where they don't technically have a factory store, but you can go there, and it's this little building, and there's a door that sort of says entryway, and you walk in there, and they, is anybody here? Is anybody, hello? And eventually somebody will come out, and you can buy their stuff there. So if during the week you happen to be in that area, you can go in there and get whatever you want get to go. What? Yeah, get yeah, hot fresh. 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 Yeah. And, and, and if they don't have it, E-Rockets carries all their stuff, we'll be glad to ship it. Just to throw that in there, Ross. All righty, well, I wrote things down as people showed up, so we'll start with Balsam Machining Service and Bill Seaman, if that's all right. Bill is the first one here, you should go first. First victim. <laughs> I like it. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. For a few people, maybe two or three that don't know me, I'm Bill Sangden, the chief proprietor, along with my wife, Balsam Machining Service. We used to be in a Chicago suburb. We made a short move to Nevada. And now we now we're in the desert. So I, I actually like coming back here. See a little green. I, I don't see a whole lot of green where I'm at, but I still love it. Um, I've got I'm selling on the field all week. I'll be here all week for the banquet. So if anybody needs any nose cones, body tubes, uh, motors, I've got all the Estes motors. I've got uh, Aerotech, everything. Uh, up through K. Uh, I didn't bring the uh, I have L's and M's back to the shop, but it, it, my van just filled up. That's it. That's it. There, there's just no more room. So those are the things I usually have at a narrow. Up. I've got little bits and things for contest flyers, centering rings, uh, launch lugs. Most of you know what I've got. If you don't, come on by. I've got that 10 by 20 tent kind of in the middle there with the Aerotech banner and my ball machine. Tonight, uh, I want to talk about uh, a couple of little, uh, some, some kits uh, we've been working on. First off, I've got, for anybody that's not familiar with it, a kit that I call the School Rocket. Um, I've had it for a num number of years now, probably, uh, probably seven, seven years, not more. This is, this is what it looks like. That thing got a little smashed in the box. Um, BT5 based, balsa wood nose cone. Uh, separate, there's not a streamer in there, but this, this is the display model here. It's streamer recovery, uh, it's great for small fields. I sell it in a bulk pack format. You can get one kit, you get 20 kits, 50 kits, got a youth group. Um, get, get 100 kits. It's, one price to all. Uh, you can only buy it directly through through me, and uh, it's five seventy five. It's got through the wall thin mounts. This makes it great for uh, uh, classroom building session. Fit the kids uh, pretty much get the fins on straight almost all the time. Um, again, five seventy five. Go online. That's the best way to order. If you go online, the secret is you're going to pay one flat six dollar shipping. Fee. I do accept school purchase orders. I get quite a few of those. Uh, they pay actual shipping, but that's, that's their choice. Um, the unpaid testimonial is I probably ordered a couple thousand of these kits. You know, yeah, Steve, is, <laughs> yeah, this this has been this is one of our bread and butter products, false machine bread and butter products. This, this little kit and it, it, uh, it competes with China. I mean, it's 100% made in the USA. I, Maybe the shock cord is made in China. I'm not sure the elastic, probably. But uh, everything else, the balsa wood nose cone, spins, everything. The beauty of it is a couple things, though. When you're doing classrooms there, it's buildable with yellow glue, which doesn't have any fumes and it's not toxic. It doesn't require any tools or measuring because everything is pre marked on the uh, motor yeah, rounds. So the only thing, if you're doing a, an outreach there, the only thing you need to bring with you basically is yellow glue, you. Uh, some table coverings, and some napkins to wipe up the excess glue. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. That, that's an important point I forgot to mention. The 
yellow food theme throughout these uh, rocket kits. I, these are educational kits. You don't want to give the kids, uh, as Steve pointed out, CA. You don't want to give them more hypoxy. Yeah, yellow glue, you can almost drink the stuff in here. Okay. Um, so that was successful. Last NARUM, in fact, I came out with a, um, a larger kit that I, I also call it a school rocket kit. I call it the three inch school rocket kit. Here it is. So I went from this, this small kit to the three inch, to the three inch kit. This one has also, since introducing it last year, been very popular. Naturally, I, I don't sell anywhere near as many, much bigger kit, but this is a great bird on a D12-3. You can fly it in a small field. It doesn't go real high, and the 18 inch uh, chute, plastic chute in there, uh, it, it, just, it just comes down close. Uses a <clears throat> polystyrene nose cone. Polystyrene cone paints beautifully. Um, this kit uh, also assembles with yellow glue. It's got balsa wood fins. They don't go all the way through to the motor mount. They're tabbed in, but they are tabbed into into uh, slots. I don't have the, yeah, here's, here's a long tube, shows you the, this is a, a, a double length tube, but it shows you the slots there that you tab into. Again, no tools are required. You can just get the yellow glue out, talk the kids through building it, and, uh, and you're, you're home running. So I have this available in a 24 millimeter motor model. I've got some here for sale. It lists online, it's been online for some time for $15. Again, this, this line of kits is designed for the educational market, bulk pack type thing. Got to keep the cost down, that, that kind of market. Cost is very, very important. Got, got an engine hook on it. So what I did then is uh, New this year, and I don't have the short. I don't have the short version here. Didn't, it didn't make it into the box. But there, I have a 29 millimeter motor mount. That's 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 not that's not it. But I have a 29 millimeter motor mount that has motor retention clips similar to this one here. Okay. Didn't go with a Estes or a, a uh, uh, Aerotech type retainer because you have to epoxy or CA those retainers on. <coughs> By going with the clips, again, it's all yellow glue. The T-nuts, which I used, uh, come pre-inserted uh, into the motor mount ring. That kit, in this kit, and, and it has plywood through the wall fins that go all the way to the motor mount, included in the 29 millimeter version. Um, this kit sells in bulk for $25 with the 29 millimeter motor mount on it. I kept going, I didn't stop there on things. I had at certain people's request, this is a uh, payload bay. This is your basic, simple payload bay. It's just got a body tube, six inch coupler, and a bulkhead in the back of a screw on it. Okay. This goes with the school rocket. Three inch rod. Put it on the 24 or the 29. Yeah. And now you've got a rocket with a payload bay. You can get this in the, you can use this payload bay in the 24 millimeter version. It only adds $5. It's a separate payload bay kit for $5. Again, educational market, keep the cost, keep the cost down. What's the exact outside diameter of the tube? All right, good question, Mark. This. This is a three inch tube. It's, it's ex I call it the T300 tube. It's the same exact tube that is used in the Big Daddy kit. This is the polystyrene nose cone. It's the T300 tube. Um, it, it, in fact, it's the three inch tube that Estes is used in its Pro Series line and a three inch tube. Um, I believe they, uh, they're discontinuing it. But, 
I didn't stop there. I kept going. I've got a another bay. I wanted a, 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 a low cost entry level dual deploy bay that uh, and there's nothing that hasn't been done here before. This 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 has been done. Okay. I've got a long screw up here. A rear bulkhead and there's a front bulkhead in there which which will push I'll push to see how it pops out okay and it's held together there's uh, pieces of body to uh, coupler stock that uh, one inch wide you cut a short section out and you glue it in to retain both the front bulkhead and the rear bulkhead the front bulkhead has three holes in an attachment of the shock cord, another hole for the uh, uh, the ejection charge wiring to go from the from the bay to the front uh, ejection uh, for the for the main for the main chute and then the drogue chute would come out the rear. You can also use it any way you want. You can you can use motor ejection, use the, uh, the avionics bay to hold the altimeter just to pop out the main chute here. So it's really an entry level type scheme for, for educators looking for something to start with, uh, to get the juices of the kids rolling, get them something they can put together. I have one caveat on these kits, the 29 volt motor kit, the, uh, this bay, the other payload bay, I don't have instructions yet. It'll be a couple months before I have them online. This is being introduced here. I have these things available for sale. This avionics bay here, $10. The, Again, the simpler one is five dollars. The 29 millimeter school kit, twenty-five dollars. The 24 millimeter version, fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollar kit doesn't have through-the-wall fins, but but I have an option there. You can, you can get that. So I've got different levels of options there. Um, I didn't stop there. <laughs> I don't have any of these for sale here, but I put a 38 millimeter mount. Now, there's other, I want to back up a little bit. The whole theme of these kits is they all go together with yellow glue. Okay, this, this kit here, the 38 millimeter motor mount, uses the same Big Daddy tube, okay, uses the, uh, the polystyrene nose cone. Okay, it all went together with yellow glue. Okay. In fact, I got uh, uh, a couple months back in the Nevada desert, I got my uh, level two on one of these with a J570. All <laughs> um, The reason I could put a, uh, a motor this size in, in a big Gaddy tube, normally this T300 tube, you wouldn't consider it high power. Okay. What I did is I've got a full length coupler that's also slotted. So it goes in almost full length. It only leaves enough room for the nose cone shoulder on the front. A lot of strength because this, this tube now is 50, with the coupler in there is 50 percent stronger than a lot of three inch high power. Um, I don't have any of these. this. This is experimental. This one I don't have any of these. These. Any anticipated price for that one, Bill? I'm looking at keeping it uh, below forty dollars, actually. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, again, uh, Steve brings up that the price point. Price is important in this market here. Okay. Before I leave, I, I didn't stop at thirty-eight. I went to fifty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Have you figured out how to get that rocket in that box? <laughs> The fins come off here. <laughs> this is just just for demo purposes. But this, these two, next and then I'll, I'll probably have, it, and I'll probably have kids for sure. Everything else I talked about, I have kids. Also, I, I've got some options that I offer at at Narum that aren't online. I mean, you can call me up and get them, but they're not on my website. You can get an upgrade to a longer tube if you want it. Uh, just come see me in the field. All these all these things, except with the exception of these two. I've got for sale off the field. I'll be in the field all week. Any other questions? Thank you very much.
myself, and uh, one thing I'm commenting too is uh, Molson Machining Service is one of our metal sponsors this year. Uh, much appreciated as far as the near and finances are concerned. All right, Rick Randall of Newway. Oh, it's taking the shortcut. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Randall from Newway Space Models. Um, the square rocket guy. Yeah, cool rocket guy. Square. <laughs> so, um, really, this started out as a fun project, and now it's been eight years that we've been doing this, which is hard to believe. Um, from a science fair project that my kid, when he was in seventh grade, uh, we got to talking about shapes and stuff, and why don't we do a square rock? So, oh, I don't know. So here we are now. There's 20 some kids, and it's crazy. But uh, I just brought some newer ones to show you. Kind of still doing the same thing: square tubes, uh, balsa nose cones, and so typical building like uh, all your other kids. Uh, let's see here. So this is the exocet based on the Estes model uh, with the fins opposing one another, which I guess opposed the real one, actually they were in line with one another. So the, one of the things that really the small guys don't do is white decals because it's difficult. Uh, the old Alps printers, you know, uh, Gordon from Roachworks and the DXLier stopped doing it because the machines got bad and everything. So. I just learned how to silk screen and made silk screen decals. It just seemed like the simplest solution was to just do it the way that Estes did it. Um, so mine aren't quite like Estes, but um, same idea. We're just silk screening on decal paper and cut them out. So a couple of the kits have white decals, which is kind of a, a unique thing, I think, especially for a, a small kind of a, you know, what I am. This one is the Starship Deceptor. And this was kind of my homage to uh, the Mars Snooper 2 from Estes with the red and the white. Uh, and, you know, when I'm sitting, and a lot of guys that design rockets and you sit and you dream and all that, and this literally, I had a dream. And I woke up, got a piece of paper, and I drew this. It's the weirdest thing ever. And uh, it just kind of turned out neat, I think so. And uh, Starship Deceptor. The same number of letters in Starship and Deceptor, which I thought was weird, and it just worked out that way. So, are those round tubes near the front? They are round tubes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Heresy. So, uh, we have a square one, which was the very first kit that I made. Just had a simple square fins and uh, actually the same, almost same size. So uh, I said we were talking. I said I should make a square two. And my buddy says, no, make it two square. And so it's two square. And the, the only thing we really did was we laser cut square holes in the entire, all four sides. And then you can paint the body tube inside that holds the engine so you can see it through. So you could do any color, you know, you could wrap it with chrome or you could paint it inside or however you want to do it to get that kind of thing. And then we left the end open, the fins, touch the tube so any air flow would come out the bottom and try not to make it worse flyable. You know, so that's that's how we did that. And let's see. This is like the newest kit. This is a uh, corner. So there's lots of corners on the fins and it's got tubes on the fins. And uh, the unique distinction here is that it's a twin engine. So this was a happy accident. I did not plan for two engines to fit in this square tube. It, I ordered them, and when I got them, it just happened to work. So <laughs> happy accident for this particular rocket. And again, we used some white uh, decals that we silk screened, along with black ones also. Then uh, the last thing that I had done, um, a guy contacted me through the email, and he built a large, gigantic square rocket for LDRS. And he's like, it'd be really cool if you made a kit of my rocket. And I said, well, maybe we could do that. So uh, this guy, Tom Cohen, 
had a 14-foot, uh, 12-inch square tube, uh, 240 pounds, launched it on an end motor, and you can find videos of it online. Um, and so I made, so we went the opposite way. I downscaled and made a model of it. Mine's not painted, but we made the model of his exact rocket. And uh, he's bought a zillion of these, which is amazing to me. And we made just a few kind of a limited basis kind of a thing. Uh, the unique thing about this is the nose cone is made from flat balsa. So this is all laser cut pieces that you assemble and then it has a solid plug that you put in the bottom to make that nose cone. So it looks really different when you see the kit form of it because there's no nose cone in it. It's just these flat sheets. And on the front is a picture of his rocket going with the end motor. So it's actually a pretty spectacular photo. You just take that nose cone and make your honest John. <laughs> so, we got, you know, there's tons of ideas for square rockets and we continue to kind of just mess with it and try to make a couple kits every year just because, honestly, I love rocketry. I started when I was 14, which was a long time ago, and uh, I just love it. And so I kind of got drug my youngest son into it, which he's back there and probably embarrassed that I'm going to mention it. But uh, he's now, uh, he was the one that got us going on the square rockets and now he's going to be a senior at Purdue in uh, aeronautical engineering technology next year and uh, so he's helping me introduce some stuff that we're going to work we're working on and that's 3d printed parts uh, which you know everybody's kind of doing that kind of stuff and uh, so he's designed our first little transition just kind of trying to open up so that we can make models of a lot other more kits you know that had reducers and that kind of stuff so in the future, I think we're going to be trying to do some 3D printed parts uh, that are square also. And pretty much that's it. We're just having fun doing rockets still. So appreciate the time, folks. Have a great evening. All right, the thing that's right is uh -huh. you take the long cut around the outside. And next we have the famous Peter Alway, who is actually working on a new book and has come out with one of his booklets for this snare to, to pedal and from all I've heard it's really cool and I'm going to steal my copy one of these nights when he's not looking. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing all kinds of interesting incantations back there. Okay, I got two things here. One's new, one's old. I'll start with and, and the, the old, old thing. one's new and the new one's old, so. Yeah. Here's what happened. I haven't sold posters in years. Okay. And part of the reason why is because I got sick of doing mail order. Um, under my bed, I found this box full of posters. And I have a bunch of these. I brought, I don't know, a dozen or two of these posters with me. Um, they're five bucks. They're a version of the original Rockets of the World poster that uh, there was a version of it that had like mission patches on the back that, that I don't even remember the company that did these. But I, as part of the deal for him having permission to print these, I got a bunch of them. And I used to sell them for five bucks each. And I found a bunch. And they're there. So if you got five bucks and want a lovely Rockets of the World poster, which has disappeared from the world since then, well, it's reappeared in the world. So. Hey, put that in the auction and you'll get more than five bucks. Someone will get more than five bucks. <laughs> you want okay. five bucks. I want five bucks. Okay. So, um, what else? Okay. I have been working for the last few years slowly on a fifth edition of Rockets of the World. And maybe it's okay. So for example, I spent all of 19, not 1950, 2015, working on a bunch of old gunpowder rockets from way back when. It started innocently Googling around, and I found a link to something from Google Books, which is the Treatise on Ammunition. 
from the Royal Military something or other um, in the 1800s. And it actually had scale data for a couple of black powder English rockets. And it even mentioned color. And then I kept poking around and I found a uh, book on life-saving rockets buried away. And as I dug and dug and dug, I came up with 18 gunpowder rockets. Some of these are 19th century life-saving rockets, but there's Congreve rockets. There are ancient Chinese fire arrows. There is scaled data from the year 1350 in the Fire Dragon Manual that gives about three dimensions and a drawing of the oldest rocket known to mankind. So there's ancient Korean, oh, there's all sorts of wonderful stuff here. It is 42 pages, which is thicker than any of my supplements. It's got standard Rockets of the World drawings, most of which are actually full of legit published dimensions, like this Cunningham line-throwing rocket. I actually found a Coast Guard, or it's actually the US Life Saving Service document that had all these dimensions. So, uh, and there are photographs of a lot of these things, either vintage photos or museum exhibits. So this is legit stuff. And so if you're, if you're all caught up in this whole 20th, 21st century rockets, like they're a new thing, this is a fun adventure into the distant past. And this is where I wish we had uh, Steve Crystal here to say all these wonderful, he proofread this thing. And he was saying all sorts of nice things about it. It really is interesting stuff. Um, and I think you'll find it worthwhile. These are 15 bucks. I got a stack of them back there. I'll sell them to you. Um, by the way, I am not going back into mail order, which means I will sell here. If I have any leftovers, I'll try and find some vendor to take them off my hands. But I'm not going to be doing these by mail order. Um, so this is, there are 75 copies in existence. And um, that's going to be all that I bring. So I want to pick them up this time. That is all. Oh, and buy this book. <laughs> Only 74 available left to steal mine. Uh, see how that works? <laughs> Nepotism never hurts. <laughs> Buy this book. Nepotism's okay as long as you keep it in the family. Yes. <laughs> and now we have two Van Milligan of Apogee Components. I hope he's back there somewhere. I see like I saw him. Yep, here he comes with a box full of rockets. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Fiberglass and things. Oh, that's good. <laughs> they're not square. Oh, they're not square. Um, my name is Kim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Uh, this year has been a very um, ambitious year. Last year in December, I said, I'm going to do 12 rockets. Um, anybody who's ever written instructions for a rocket knows how hard that is. Uh, fortunately, I had help. Um, the, uh, the first, this is not the first one, but four of them came from um, Doug Schrock, it's called the Schrockets Rockets. He was selling the plans on his website and I, I approached him and I said, hey, let's turn these into kits and we'll sell, you know, we'll do our best to sell them as, as much as we can. Uh, so this was the first one, uh, this is called the Skonk Wolf. Uh, it's kind of a German military big 24 millimeter engine mount, uh, 18 inch plastic parachute. It's like great. Um, I think you'll like that one. He'll never fly. What's that? He'll never fly. Uh, he, had, he did three other I ones. I bet you have to make that glide. Uh, this one's called the Ibis. Um, I've been flying them at uh, Narcon, or NSL. Not the thin off of this one. Um, it's got a plastic resin boat tail that I made. Brand new nose cone. I had this one blow molded. Uh, so I've been spending some money on blow molds this year. This is the Ibis. It has this nice, all the parts are laser cut through the wall fins. Uh, it has a laser cut inlet duct. Um, it's already pre-cut, so you don't, have to, you don't have to do the wraps like you used to do in the past. It's the Ibis. Um, it's the uh, Johnny Star Commander. Again, it's covered in uh, red dust from El Gordo, New Mexico, and, and not to fit off of that. 
again, um, nice inlet on the bottom, laser cut. Um, lots of fins on this one. It uses the same nose cone, it's a BT-55. Uh, it's Johnny Star Commander. This is the, another one of his called the Sea Sting. Um, this one that a lot of people like. Uh, I like. It's kind of my favorite too, called the Sea Sting. Again, uh, the inlet is, is kind of famous for uh, Shrocks. He likes his inlet. That's four of them. Um, the one that I didn't, this was the first one called the uh, Egg Tosser. This is a competition egg locker rocket. Um, has a clear um, Lexan nose cone, uh, one of our foam egg protectors inside. 18 inch parachute, plastic parachute. Um, has a simulated egg because that's the only way to keep the nose cone. Um, inside is the foam. Give you a little extra protection. It's already pre molded with the egg shape in there. It's a soft, um, I think it's three pound density foam. Um, this one also comes with a uh, flyaway rail guide that, that snaps on so you don't have to have the launch lug down here so that it, you can fly it off a of rail and the, the rail guide just pop off as soon as it leaves the pad. Um, the rail guides, people like them, so they asked me to do other sizes. And so those, those are some other products. I have a 13 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 24 millimeter. This is a 24 millimeter with a standoff rail guide. So the rail guides just came out uh, last month. Uh, so that's, this was the first one. This one came out actually I think it was January 1st or January 2nd. We did one called the, it's a 2.6 inch rocket called the Vapor. It's, I didn't bring one with, but it's a upscale version of the old Estes Phantom, which is all see-through. So Ooh. it has a see-through body tube so you can see the engine mount and the uh, through-the-wall centering rings, or through-the-wall fin tabs and the centering rings on the side. Uh, then um, I wanted to do something for NARAM, so we came out with a payload altitude rocket. Uh, I don't know if we'll see any out here on the range this week, because this is a uh, 19 millimeter tube that will carry the standard NAR 18 millimeter payload, single stage, so we'll fly on a sea engine. First time we launched it, um, we broke a record, um, but we didn't launch it off a piston, so um, it's still possible to set a new record. Um, so this one has a, has a very easy to remember name called the Single Stage Payload Altitude Rocket. <laughs> Very German. Yeah. Uh, it has a brand new uh, factory form nose cone. It's, it's uh, claim the fame. I'm getting good at vacuum forming now. Um, the next one that's going to come out, come out um, I'm trying to do the, the new um, NAR uh, uh, competition series. Uh, I'm trying to do a kit for each one. So this is. Uh, this is altitude, altimeter altitude rocket. So it will fly um, the perfect flight, firefly altimeter, the jolly light, not the jolly light, the uh, telemetrum, ultraspectrum, micro peak, and the adrel. Um, and the uh, firefly is a little bit, it will only fit to the BT-22, so I had to make this little payload here. Give us good pictures. Uh, but the micro peak and the adrel will actually fit inside channel. of a coupler, so you can just pop the nose cone off. This one's glued on. You can pop the nose cone off and then just fly it like that. Uh, so it's much shorter if you're using the micro peak or the adrel. Uh, the adrel will actually fit into a BT-5, so you can actually replace this nose cone, put a BT-5 nose cone on it, and fly it even higher. It's two stage. Um, so, um, flying it as a single stage, you can do quarter A, half A, or A, and the NAR series is up to a B engine, so you put two A's together and you fly in a B engine. So that's B altitude. So for you people that are going to do competition next year, this is hopefully the one you'll get. Um, it has a vacuum form nose cone, and I made a new vacuum form transition um, to make it all easy to put together. 
Um, and then this morning I found out that uh, they changed, in the new series uh, competition, they changed the diameter of the NAR payload from 19 millimeters or, or from an 18 millimeter down to a coupler size. Uh, that's all wrong. So I was going to do this rocket, which was basically the single stage payload altitude rocket. But now, uh, what I'll just do is I'll just make a longer payload to and slot this one on there. And so payload two will carry the new NAR payload to this rocket. So it actually cuts my work in half, so one less rocket. So now I gotta do, to get my 12 rockets this year, I gotta find another one. So if you have an idea for a 12th rocket for me, let me know. <laughs> Um, so for TARC this year, last year for TARC, um, they did transitions from uh, BT-70 or BT-80 down to BT-55 or BT-60. And Apogee, we did a vacuform transition. And we thought they were great. But then the kids started putting in the really high thrust motors into them. And they were vacuform, so it, they couldn't take the thrust. And it was kind of an embarrassment, because we thought it was a great product. And all of a sudden, and now it was like, ugh. Uh, so this year, um, I went out and spent the money, and uh, I made a vacuum or a blow mold transition from BT80 to BT70. This one you could probably drive a, a car over, and it's not going to break out. So for if you're doing park with some kids and they need their transition, this is the one I have. Uh, we also have a body tube-based transition with a shroud that goes around, kind of like a paper shroud, but it's actually vacuum form. So all the thrust goes through the tubes, nothing goes through the, the transition. Um, and that one is also what we have available on the energy website. So that's my new, new transition. Uh, and then this week, brand new this week, we, we got um, nylon parachutes. So we have three sizes available. This is a 15 inch nylon parachute, this is an 18 inch. I can't see the lovely pattern on this. This is the 24 inch. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pass this around. You can feel how nice and soft that is. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, yes. I want it back. Right I, I need it tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the 18 inch version. We did these again for Tark. Uh, last year we ran out of parachutes for the park kids. Uh, so this year I said I'm not going to I'm not going to run out of uh, parachutes. So this is uh, we had we had a, a bunch of these made. So we have a lot of kids. That's the <coughs> uh, and the 15 inch was actually we did this one probably about 10 years ago as a 58 inch parachute. I like the design, so I said, I'll, I'll put this on a 15 inch. We ran out of all the other ones from the Dynastar line. This is the, the smaller bit. It's really soft, and then this will go, it's probably easily into a BT-15, probably even smaller. Um, that's pretty much it. I do have some postcards of the Shrox the kits. We sent some of these out to customers, so if, if you'd like a, a postcard, Commemorative postcard. They yes. disappear as they go. Right. Take one, keep one. As they, go. If they don't make it around the room, just hit me up. Uh, any questions? So you have a pink rocket and an orange rocket. Are you planning to make the pink rocket in the orange color and the orange rocket in the pink color, or do we have to make you could pay, you could, Are these contest rockets you mean? Yes, those two right you here. You can pay them in the color. Like I, one's pink and one's orange. I, yeah. Well, this one's it was a 19 millimeter tube, so it's a little bit bigger than this one. Um, and I took the nose cone off of this. Somehow I lost the nose cone on the trip. But it's the same nose cone. Uh, but now I don't have to make this pink one anymore. It's going to be this one. And you can pay, I recommend painting them on fluorescent color because they do go high. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tim. And uh, Apogee also sponsored uh, payload altitude medals this year's this year's NARAM, So thank you for doing that.
Okay, somewhere back there was Randy Bogley, I think, with B e Rockets. Bring my box. Yeah, would you bring a rocket Hi to everybody. Hello. Oh, I'm Randy Bodeway. If you don't know me, you better come get to know me this week. I'll be here all week. Uh, oh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Estes screwed up. So we're here to save you. If you order your Starship Nova from us, we'll include the correct body tube instead of the piece of junk that us to send you. So as long as they're available, we'll have those. Um, new kits this last year, we produced um, a few competition models that will be as much fun to fly as being in competition. Uh, of course, one is the Blue Jay. I can't find my pod, but you guys know how this works, basically. It's a boost glider, so it'll have a pod up front. Uh, flies on 18 millimeter motors. Uh, the design is probably a little bit familiar, uh, but we've done a great job in re-engineering all the weak points on it, especially the main break point, which is usually right here. We've doubled it up, and it's also a very large, um, uh, what do we call those things? Keel. Large keel. So you're not going to have to worry about breaking it. Uh, it's also called the Blue Jay because on the front head of it is the head of a Blue Jay. And uh, Jay Berry uh, actually was the uh, designer. So this is a nice kit. Uh, it's available at eRocket so you can just order it through them. Uh, the other thing we have that is brand new last year still is a little helicopter. Now this one went to NARM last year and got fourth place in the C division by a rookie. Um, it's basically a drop fin helicopter uh, that when deployed, of course I didn't put the rubber bands out, but you know it's a beautiful little helicopter. It's got um, some very interesting points that makes it, uh, it's got rubber band connections that have been uh, cut out by the laser cutter, uh, so that makes that simple. It's got a different type of hub on it so that you can actually build the hub flat on the table and then fold it up and put it on the rocket ladder. And of course, because it's a drop fin, there's no burn string. So this is a wonderful kit. It is available um, at eRockets. You know, just place your order there. Or get it from me this week. I'll be here all week. Uh, the next kit we came out with is the little Augie. And little Augie's just, this is an SLS version, which is a Semrock large scale version. So it's a heavy duty tube. It's got a um, nice parachute in it. It's got a nice uh, leather, or not leather, but uh, ripstop nylon parachute. <laughs> leather. <laughs> you can see where my mind's going. <laughs> anyway, it uses 29 millimeter motors. So it's a two stage unit. This is the first kit that's ever had a pin in it. And what you do is you remove the pin, you put your motor in it, Estes black powder motor, put your black powder motor in it, put the pin back in it, load the parachute and the wadding and everything as you normally would. And then the second motor, the O motor, is gonna load from the bottom. And it simply snugs in there. It's kind of like Chad staging a rocket. And it's got <coughs> aluminum uh, foiling on the inside so that it protects it when the second stage goes up. So what will happen is you'll light the first stage It'll go up about 500 feet. It will light the second stage, dump the motor, and then because it is driving the forces, the air through the uh, front, it actually howls like a dog. Okay? Uh, so it's the little Augie doggy, and it'll go up another 1,000 feet. So this is not a rocket for the weary because it's going to go such huge uh, altitudes. Uh, but this is a fun rocket that, uh, this is our first upscale of a kit that came out uh, from a design of the month type thing that Estes had many, many years ago. We modified it, we upscaled it, uh, turned it into something that uh, the guys that like these big black powder motors will just love. So if you're interested in uh, Little Augie, what engines do you recommend? come see me. Um, this has, uh, well, you can run on the E16s, an E16 combination, or an F15 combination, or a combination of the two. All right. 
So it'd be a great way to burn two uh, 29 millimeter black powder motors at the same time. <laughs> wow. All right, the other kit I don't have because it uh, had some mishaps in a launch, uh, but I brought the most important part, and that is the helicopter to the maple seed. This is something Carl started many years ago, and he couldn't figure out how to get the darn thing to fly. So we figured out how to get it to fly. It's the only one I got left. I don't want to throw it because if it gets stuck in the ceiling, like every other place else I go. Uh, but anyway, it looks. I got a stick to knock it down. Yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll get something to knock down. Um, if you have, if you've ever seen the um, Estes Mosquito, the big one. It looks kind of like the Estes Mosquito when it goes up. It goes up on 24 millimeter motors. It'll go to 500 to 1,000 feet. It will drop the three fins off that are maple seed. So these maple seed down. Has anyone had a chance to build one of these yet? It's mm -hmm. quite an engineering marvel. If you want something that's really fun to fly and comes down in four pieces, <laughs> come, buy one, come buy one of these from us. <laughs> Uh, we do not have all the parts available yet to replace them, but we're going to have uh, the additional maple seeds if you, if you lose a seed like I do all the time. I mean, I throw them as demos and they get caught in the ceiling or in the lights or wherever. So if you I try to keep away from Randy, if you buy three replacement blades, you get a free body. <laughs> yes, yes. For $34, I'll sell, sell you a three pack and uh, we'll get you going. All right, uh, the Farsight X. Farsight X is now available. Um, this has not officially been released till this very moment right now. So this is the Farsight X uh, three-stage rocket. Uh, I've got a ton of these available, so if you're interested in this, I've got them. Uh, that'll be up on our web page here in probably the next 24 hours or so. Um, the other thing that is brand new is the Thunderstorm. And if you've got a chance to be out on the sport range, we've tried the smallest motor today which was a D12-3, and it uh, doesn't quite do the altitude we expect, expected, but that's okay. Simulations are sometimes wrong. Um, this is a Carl McLawhorn rocket that he designed before he passed away. Uh, we made, I think we made one, mo mo only one modification, two modifications. Uh, we changed to through the wall fins, so the fins go all the way through the wall down to the motor mount. 24 millimeter motor. They are basswood fins. He was going to do them in um, in uh, balsa, balsa wood. wood. We're not going to do that. If they're basswood. Uh, so those are some nice upgrades. And this kit is now available. Today's its official release date. Tomorrow we're going to fly this on an F44, which I believe would be about the biggest motor we would typically fly in. So we'll fly this tomorrow again as well. Now um, I've got. All right, did anybody hear about our mishap? My mishap? Our mishap. Oh. Listen to me. It was my mishap. There are rockets strung on I-75 from Dayton northward. So anybody that wants to pick those up off the side of the highway, feel free. There's a bunch of rockets on the side of the road, including Estes, um, Little Joe 2s, awesome. and we're not sure what else. <laughs> um, I thought originally that all the Moabs fell on the highway too, but maybe not. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this is the Moab. Uh, some of you might have seen the stand on the Facebook when Jay, Jay was making this. We thought he was switching to railroading, but then we found out later he was just making a stand for his Moab. Uh, the stand doesn't come with the Moab, but the Moab is the coolest rocket. Um, obviously, it's the mother of all bombs. It flies on a 24 millimeter motor, so this can be D12, E12s. It is rear ejection, so when it is coming back in, it looks like the real bomb. Okay. Now, today we flew it. Uh, it was a beautiful up. The down wasn't as good as it could have been, uh, but this is... Carl used to have these X kits where you used to have to go online and get your instructions. Um, we discontinued all of those because they wasn't really providing what we were looking for and we were providing a lot of substandard parts. Don't like that. The Moab is what we're going to, we're replacing the X kit version with what we call builder's kits. A builder's kit would be something that you guys would build, not the typical public out there, okay? This is a builder's kit. 
It has very minimal instructions um, and all the parts. Uh, this is probably a skill level four because it is grid fins. And these are all pieces of basswood that go together. It takes probably an hour just to put the grid fins all together. So this is a skill level four kit. Uh, we've got white decals on it. Um, nice kit. Limited edition, we think we're gonna make 50. It might be a little bit less than that. It does have three ounces of nose weight to make it stable. So we've done a lot of work with it. It is truly a builder's kit. If you guys are interested in this, you'll be able to buy it on the eRockets website until the 40 or 50 are gone. So just be aware, this will be coming up. All right, did I get through everything? Almost. A few things that we've got uh, that are new for eRockets is uh, tracking powder. Um, we've got some reasonably large bottles of tracking powder. Um, we're going to sell these for five bucks a piece till they're gone. Um, this might be a good week to uh, use the, the heavy, I mean the great dispersion orange tracking powder. Uh, it's available from us. We've got some large containers and when the large containers are gone, the containers are smaller because we couldn't get bigger containers anymore. Uh, but anyway, these are only five dollars this week until they're gone. Uh, the other thing we've got that's new for us is we have a high heat tape. You guys are used to seeing the Chad Ring uh, uh, tape that's in yellow. We have it in red and it's a lot less expensive. Uh, it's only 10 bucks a roll. So if you're interested in high heat tape, uh, we've got that available now. And last but not least, I got this for my wife, but then she said, no, I should just sell it. Remove before flight keychains are available from us as well. Um, I think they're three bucks a piece. So come see us. Uh, we're at the tent down by the contest range, and we'll be here pretty much all week. All right. Thank you, Randy. And anybody else? Oh, the cross is back there. I'm usually the last. What? I'm usually last. You are last, I think, I or is there last. someone else? Is there somebody else? Nope. Anybody else with some real products today? Most of mine are tomorrow or next month. Okay, I'm uh, Doug Frost. We switched the name of the company recently to, uh, from Rocketry Golf to uh, uh, Frost Rocketry. Decided to branch out and do a lot of other things. Long well, story short, started out with Rocketry Golf. Greatest tax write-off I ever came across, okay? Um, I've been writing this one off since 1989. Uh, average between five and $7,000 in my pocket every year, not the IRS. So t-shirts, hats, I challenge golf pros to a game. First first couple of guys that tied one and beat the other. Um, so I got the catalogs, take them on home with him. 2016, I haven't upgraded it since. It's uh, so a rocket for golf kits. Hats, t-shirts, a uh, book, 60-page book, a launch pad that's a killer. Azel launch pad, azimuth uh, 360 degree and elevation 180. Now I've been flying these at 45 degrees from vertical. Oh my God, it's against the NAR coast. Well, in 2013, met with the NAR board in California and said, would you be kicking me out of the NAR if I'm flying model rockets to 45 from vertical? They said, well, if it's at a NAR sanctioned event, yes. This is not an our sanctioned event. I'm on a golf course competing with golf pros. We did a, a bit for the uh, Discovery Channel. I came out of Toronto, Canada. Flew all the way to California. Hired a film crew, 10 hours filming. I'm playing this golf pro out there in Auburn, California. He was beating me bad because he can putt way better than I can. But the rocket launched to the, to the uh, green. I have a 537 yard shot. Uh, I'm sorry, take it back. 437 yard shot, Aerotech E, landed 20 feet from the pin. And I got these two golf pros on the, on the camera. One says, oh my God, we can't beat this guy. Or, or something like that, he said, yeah. He said, we have no chance. So I got him on DVD, the videos will be out soon. I had them, and then I packed up out of California, moved, and they're in my garage in storage. So, so what I have is uh, the Rocketry Golf catalogs for free. Uh, T-shirts and hats are online. Uh, the book, uh, all about how to play it. So I haven't told the wife yet, but I'm ten thousand dollars away from moving this thing worldwide. Okay. Going to hold a tournament near Charlotte, North Carolina, roughly a year from now. Going to be sending out free rocketry golf kits to those who want to compete in it. 
Normally they're eighteen dollars each. You need four to six of them to compete in a nine hole game, okay? We might play only four or five holes. You can have a designated putter with you. Entry fee at about two hundred dollars per person. Yes, including the designated putter. Uh, trophies and cash prizes. We're looking about six thousand dollar first place and whittle it down for second. Third. So we'll be announcing that in, uh, in our magazine, uh, hopefully in about six months. So I have a Jayhawk data package. Um, I'm producing two Jayhawk kits. Uh, last year I came out of the uh, retirement, more or less, <clears throat> built a Jayhawk model for scale altitude. Okay, it's a, almost 19 inch long, 1.63 diameter. Well, with 24 millimeter motors, it's kind of like taking a knife to a gunfight. Okay, didn't have a chance, knew it eight months out building it, but it came in first place after the static judging, the scale judging. So I'm sitting in first place spot going, ooh, I'm back, <laughs> I'm coming back. So then I build myself a 30.5 inch one. This will be a kit by November, okay? Uh, I've had balsa machining uh, build back here, build me a dozen nose and tail cones, and they are precise. The smaller one, I've got 18 of those nose and tail cones for the 19 inch with a 1.63. This is 2.63 by 30.5. This will be at the NARAM here, uh, they're in this next week. And if I look at the photos, the data package, I got three of them online. The full thing is $95. Everything to enter it in the nationals. Six blueprints, some are Naval, Bureau of Naval Weapons, uh, beach aircraft, and so forth. A couple of them are NAR. We've done, the NAR blueprints are pretty good. And then part of the data package is all these photos uh, from the real thing down in Southern California. Maybe to measure the hatches because they're on the blueprints with no dimensions. So we measured the real hatches, one on tail cone, two on the nose. So all this is available in the $95 packet. I have a $35 packet. It's all on my website. I uh, pick up a card up here, get on my website, check it out. If you ever wanted to build a Jayhawk, I was involved in the 1980s Centuri kit with Chris Pocock. They sold thousands of them. It's a very popular bird. Um, Delta wing, uh, canard, canard fins, chevron shaped tip rudders. So that'll be out by November, both those kits. Then we're going into whatever size you want on 3D printed nose guns. These things are the stained plastic in a two liter bottle, soda bottles. You could drive over this and it won't break. Petri. Well, I haven't tried that. <coughs> These are five dollars uh, this week. Any size you want, we can make them three D printed. So that there's a page all about that here. So keep your eye on us and uh, pick up the card. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While well, I still have everybody here, there are a couple things. <coughs> It was mentioned that uh, there are drones flying around at the field. As far as I'm concerned, that's fine. But I will remind you that drones are not covered by the NAR insurance. So if you crash into something with your drone, it's your problem and not the NAR insurance problem. Uh, I was reminded of that today, so I thought I'd announce it. Yes. Do you wish to be notified if someone is flying a, flying a drone somewhere, or do, do we just need to stay out of the way? I think basically I'm going to say stay out of the way. If it becomes an issue, then that may change. And we have a winner. Uh, at least one is here. We had our contest for Sputnik 1 commemorative and Apollo commemorative. And one person here won, launched one of each. <coughs> And his name is Bob Caplo, so come and get hey, your no way. <laughs> so we will. Yeah, one is, one is Apollo 11 and one is or, uh, Apollo whatever, and the other is Sputnik 1. So there. Right. Thank you. And uh, we also have a, a horizontal super rock winner somewhere, and I'm not sure where he is, and so we will postpone that until we figure that out. And that is it for Manufacturers Forum. If anybody has any questions or other things of your contest director, um, I'm hiding somewhere else. Did you want to, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Did you want to remind people about breakfast tomorrow? Ah, yes, indeed. We have one day this whole two weeks, the hotel will be providing us breakfast, and that's tomorrow morning. It's set up from 6.30 to 8, so that FAI guys have a chance to sneak in there and grab theirs before they get out to the field at, at uh, at 8 so they can be out of here by 7 
and the hotel would only do it for an hour and a half, so 6.30 to 8 it is. I have been informed if you're a real early bird, often it's set up about 15 minutes ahead of the 6.30 time. But that is a continental breakfast, they call it, and I have no idea what it will include, but you show up and find out, and if it's to your satisfaction, you've had breakfast, and if it isn't, you'll have plenty of time to get it somewhere else. Which room? Uh, it will be uh, in the uh, oh. It's the room next to the restaurant. Uh, yeah. Thornapple? Thorn okay. Thornapple room. Thornapple. Thornapple. Thorn 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 and you're all invited to go there and have breakfast. Big out. Alrighty. Anything else? And thank you for reminding me of that. Oh, shit, I don't have it on my web page. Basically, it's way too good. I'll put it on my web page. 